Hello there, I'm Dave Dickens and welcome to this episode of my entry for the Great Guitar Build-Off. So, let's see the story so far. Be honest I know what I need to do I just don't know how to do it let's get going now it seems to me that the key to success for any construction project is doing things in the right order for example, I can't nail this feather edge to the Aris rail until I've put the Aris rail in and I can't put the Aris rail in until I've got the posts in. Now my plan was really simple. Do the neck, do the body, then sort the electrics and the assembly. But I've not stuck to the plan. I've not finished the neck. So the first thing I need to do in this episode is sort the neck out. I need to route a channel for the truss rod. I'm using a short truss rod because I'm going to use a bolt to attach the neck to the body of the guitar. I then need to plane down the fretboard so that I can put the binding on the sides and then stick the fretboard down. Once that's dried I will shape the back of the neck then I'll set it aside for a few days just to let it settle. When routing the truss rod I've got to be careful that I don't go too far down and hit this area here which is the bolt to bolt the neck onto the guitar and um, this is actually it's based on my travel guitars which have 21 frets so what I've done I've, I've actually marked a line which is between the 21st and 22nd fret on there and that is where I need to place my template. Just line this up with the nut at the top there. That's down there. So I've got my halfway marker there so the template needs to sit just about there. So what I'm going to do is just going to mark the side of this neck. The template will sit there so I know that's the position where the the bolt's going to go. We'll see if I draw a line there how far up that's going to go. The truss rod is six mil wide. Got a six mil router bit in the machine. I'm just going to put the template on with some masking tape and super glue. That looks okay. I just need to widen this end by the uh, headstock to allow for the adjustment uh, knob there. And that's the router finished with. Somebody asked me, did I not like routers? I don't really. I think they're fantastic machines, but they bite. Just going to chisel out the access here to the uh, truss rod adjustment. That should do it. Now I need to shape the fretboard so I can fit the binding on it and according to my notes fret 21 should be a width of about 54 mil 27 so um, I'm going to mark that I marked it with a knife I'm just going to take it down with the plane I 
I've used some super glue masking tape just to hold this fretboard in position while I do a couple of holes so I can register it with these cocktail sticks. I'm going to use a bit of epoxy just on each end of this truss rod just to hold it in place. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to put it to one side, let it cure. I've got another problem. That is the struts for this guitar. As you know, it's hollow body and I need some struts to support the uh, bowed top and the bowed bottom. But I'm limited on space and this has been worrying me. But this morning I had an idea. In fact, the idea came from some reclaimed timber from an old sofa. These slats. Don't ask me why I've reclaimed them. It's just that I thought, uh, I thought they may be useful one day. They're plywood and um, they've got a bend on them. Now, as I understand it, the conventional way of making struts would be to take a piece of wood, cut some strips from it, shape the bottom to fit the curvature of the top and the bottom of the guitar, stick it down and then shape it um, afterwards with a chisel. Now the problem I've got is I haven't got much room in this guitar. I'm going to be sliding pickups on a tray in the middle so I can't afford to take up too much room. So I need struts that are quite thin and I think if I cut this and try and shape it, it's going to be too thin and the, the wood will simply bend with the bottom. So, now I don't know for sure, but these look like they're a laminate. And I would bet that they were made to this shape and glued in this shape. So that inherently this piece of wood on this side is effectively shorter than that piece on that side giving it the the bend and the springiness and it's strong enough to support the weight of somebody along with the other slats so my idea is to create a laminate and I've got some wood um, I might as well make it look attractive so I've got some light wood I think this is maple I've got uh, a bit of the um, sycamore and um, I've got some of the uh, van call so I'm going to make myself some pre-formatted struts to the shape of this dipped surface first off I've got to cut some strips of wood okay this is going to be an experiment i've not spent an awful lot of time on this i've got some off cuts here i've got some thin off cuts they may not be thin enough but uh, they seem to they will bend so uh, i've i've also just tried to bend it a little bit on the bending iron but um, not very much so let's try it i'm going to glue it i'm going to exaggerate the curve because i think i'll need to do that uh, i think it'll spring back a bit but um Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to leave that overnight and uh, see what we have in the morning. The moment of truth 
Did it work? Let's have a look. Ooh. Ooh, it looks promising. Wow. Well, that's actually worked a lot better than I expected. Now, um, not quite stuck very well on that side, but my goodness me, that has held pretty much the exact shape that um, I glued it in. And I'll tell you what, that is really, really stiff. So, I think I've got a solution to my strut problem there. Now, um, I made these, but they're a little bit too bent. So I need to make some more with a rather more subtle curve. Okay, well I have a selection of offcuts which I have thinned down with the thicknesser. So that looks like cherry to me, that looks like a bit of maple. This is the coal. This is actually a bit of um, oak. Um, and I think what I'm going to do with these is make some laminates up in the shape of the struts that I need. So let's try and find an attractive mix. It's got a split in it there, that one. Um, but in actual fact, that shouldn't really matter because I'm going to glue it all together anyway. When I experimented with this approach to make these, I, I bent it slightly more than I needed to. Now, I thought I'd have to bend it a lot more than I needed to, but obviously not. But what I'm going to do, I've got a bit of plywood on each side and I'm just going to use that just to give it a little bit more bend because I think it will spring back. Okay, so now all we need to do is to glue them up. Now this strange device is my attempt at getting a clamp to work across this bench. I'm clamping it here because uh, in my experiment it did um, have a gap about there. So clamp it on either side. Well, there's nothing more I can do today. So uh, I shall leave this overnight see what we've got in the morning. Okay, it's time to have a look at the neck. Looks okay. I'm going to radius the fretboard and I'm going to shake the back of the neck. Now, I've mentioned this before, I know, but this is olive and olive is an irritant. I know because when I built the great guitar build off 2020, the uh, collar of my shirt was slightly open and my chest looked like I've been in the sun for a month and it itched for about a month. So I'm going to put gloves on, seal myself up and uh, hopefully this time with all the vacuums going I won't have so much dust.
Okay, well I've radiused the fretboard and managed to avoid getting a rash from the olive dust this year. It serves me right for sanding olive in a t-shirt last year. Uh, just to explain how I did it, I've used this homemade radiusing block. It's set to 16 inches. Um, I've got a link in the description below on how I made this. This has got 60 grit paper on it. I then went with some 120 grit paper on this uh, block, again 16 inch, and then I finished it with some 240 grit on this levelling beam. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking at the moment. Now I'm going to shape the back of the neck. I haven't quite figured out how the neck joint's going to look at the moment, but um, I'm going to bolt it the neck on to the body. So what I'll do, I think um, I'll, I'll give myself some room here, so I'll put a shape about there and I'll do something similar on the other side. So joining those two up we'll do something like that and then shape it in there and there. Okay now I've seen various builders shape the back of the neck in various different ways. I know at Crimson Guitars one of the ways that they teach is to to mark the the neck in segments and uh, to create facets and I've used that method and I like that method it's very good I've seen other people who use um, various files and uh, rasps etc to um, round the the body end and then the nut end and then join the two together and again that looks quite effective and I think today that's possibly the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to use this neck clamping vise that I made. Again, I'll put a link in the description below to how I made this. I'm going to get my mask on for this, so I'm going to play some music and the music in this video has been produced on that uh, red strat that I've got if you watched my last uh, ideas video you'll see it and uh, the olive and walnut guitar using the acoustic sound which I really love on those sort of guitars anyway I'm gonna get ready getting quite a bit of tear out using the spoke shave on the uh, vancol so I know it's not pretty and I really don't like using it but I'm gonna have a go using the sabre tooth disc see if that's any better <laughs>
was certainly a, an interesting shaping experience and the sabre tooth turned the workshop into a dust bucket which is now settled now fortunately i've certainly uh, rough shaped it to the shape that i want uh, what i'm going to do now is put some binding on and then let the neck settle i saw that ben crow had got one of these devices and i thought what a clever idea to uh, get binding down to the right size so got a bolt here to just to adjust it and it just pulls that back away from the uh, spindle there excellent idea thanks ben right i'm gonna set that and get this binding shape Well guys, I nearly made a classic Dave mistake then, and that is sticking the binding on before I've resawn the fret slots. Because I've just radius this fret board, and obviously these fret slots now need to be made a little bit deeper, and that's really hard work if you've got binding on. So I've got my fretting saw set to 3mm, and I'm just going to gently go over these fret slots. Fitting the binding, take two. Okay, I'll leave that side to set, then I'll do the other side. Now you may remember in the last video, I had a slight indecisive moment at the end of the video of how to tackle the body and the pickups. I've had some ideas about that and I'm gonna let Indecisive Dave give you an update. Now I'll be honest, I know what I need to do, I just don't know how to do it. The thing I'm finding difficult about this is trying to cope with the fact that not only has the guitar, guitar got curves all the way around it, it's also got this contoured back and top and it's trying to get my mind around all of the measurements of how what's going to happen in the middle there I've got, now I've been pondering this problem for a few days now while I've been working on decorating the house with uh, Carolyn and I think what I'm going to do is start on the platter first because that's going to drive the dimensions of all the internal fixtures of this guitar the platter has to be the right size for the pickups and it has to allow free movement of those pickups. I've got this piece of aluminium which was rescued from behind a solid fuel cooker that was installed in the property when we moved in. Needless to say that's gone now but um, it's about two mil thick and I think it will make an ideal base for the platter. I've also cut some strips of wood which I'm going to stick on each side of the platter to allow me to have a, a trough where the wires can go and also it will hopefully allow the pickups to move more freely up and down the platter that's the idea anyway this is the bridge pickup and the distance between the two fixing brackets is 66.9 so i'm going to cut the aluminium at 68 i'm going to just check the other pickup first but then I can file it down to the exact size. First things first, I need to get a straight edge on this aluminium. Now the pickups have got four screws at the bottom there, which sort of stick out from the base, um, which means this plate can't go right underneath the pickup. In fact, um, I've also got the wire there as well, which I've got to handle somehow. I'm hoping that that can just bend round. 
on that side have to see that okay so what i need to do now is i need to pull that pickup away from this plate a little bit to allow me to put the wire through the middle there and for those screws to sit properly to do that i was going to put some strips on the edge of the wood but it, actually looking at this i think i need to put the strips just inside so that the pickup sits on them just about there and i'll leave a channel down the middle that i can put the wire i've got a bit of experimentation going on here what i've done i've just mounted these two strips of wood on this aluminium just with some masking tape and they're approximately three mil thick which is just about the right height so that when that sits on there and if you can see this basically the screws these screw heads miss these two pieces of wood uh, so it sits in the middle there and hopefully and this is what I'm about to find out is if I put a, a brace on the back here that this whole lot should slide back and forth so let's let's get this brace fitted and let's see what happens okay so that's holding the pickups on and they are sliding back and forth now it's a bit it's a bit tight Let's loosen that off there there's a bit of movement i want i'm going to need to put some sort of soft padding or something on the underside of this to stop it rattling because that's the last thing you want in a guitar you don't want anything rattling but I think the principle is okay. The other thing is where I thought the wire would have to come down the centre of the uh, platter here. It at the wire feeds out the edge, so and there is room. There will be room between the edge of the uh, platter here and the sides of the channel for that wire to uh, to sit comfortably there. So I think I'm probably getting onto a winner here. Just need to refine these two rails. go much further I need to get the length of the platter sorted out now I wanted to come right up to the, the uh, fretboard so I can get the pickup as far forward as I possibly can towards the neck I've marked a center line on the platter and I've extended the center line on this piece of paper so I can see where I, I'm going and so this is the back of the guitar now then this plate's going to have to be fixed to another plate that's going to screw onto the back of the guitar there. So it can't go any further than the very edge there. Just trying to think what's the best idea. I think what I'm going to do is just mark that back edge. I think I'm going to cut it off there and then if I need to do any shaping I can do that later next thing to do is to mark the position of the pickups in their normal position and I've, I've got these marked on this plan where I'd normally have them um, so again I'm going to push that right up to the end of the the neck there line that up with the center and just mark where those pickups would normally go and there and on there so this is going to give me the extent uh, of the rails so let's do that okay so that's where the bridge pickup will start off at so if i allow just a few mil on that side that should be okay and that's the position it should end up at and maybe i'd get a bit closer so I'll run it to the end there. So that looks about the right length.
Now for the next part of this puzzle. So, imagine we have a platter running down the centre of the guitar inside. In order to support this platter, we need a channel. The channel, imagine, will be something like this. Pieces of wood on either side. Now, it's important that the channel is clear of the brackets on the pickups, otherwise it'll jam. So I need to space them out a little bit wider. And that means I need something at the front of this platter to run inside a channel within these side pieces. And I think this is where this piece of rod, aluminium rod, is going to come in. So my intention is to mount the rod so that it sticks just proud of these brackets. And then I'll either route or build a channel in the sides of these pieces for this rod to run in. I'm going to stick these wooden uh, rails on with some epoxy, some slow setting epoxy and then I'll just put it in this small veneer clamp just to hold it down overnight. I think it's time to undo this contraption to see if my idea for making struts is going to work. Now then, look at that. Question is, is it going to work? Let's have a look. It's a bit, again, it's, it's, it's bowed it's bowed a bit more than I'd have expected. I do expect this to spring back a bit, but it doesn't seem to. And uh, that's quite incredible, that is. Amazing. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is cut strips from this. I've got uh, four struts out of that piece. Now, the whole point of doing this was that I, that I haven't got a lot of room inside the body of the guitar. So I wanted something that would be very stiff and these are pretty stiff um, but i uh, would not take up too much room with inside the guitar body um, so that i can get all the pickups and all the other bits and pieces that i need in the side of the guitar and um, i think these are going to do the job um, i'll need to make some more but um, yeah it's looking good now then, I've added a few more bits to this puzzle and um, shaped a few bits. The neck is now roughly shaped and it's got binding on it. It needs some sanding and trimming. I've got some struts, which I'm hoping will uh, support the front and the back of the guitar. I've started on the platter to hold the pickups. I've got the kerfing. And this board behind is going to be used for the back of the guitar. So things are coming on. How it's all going to hang together, I'm still not sure. I'm afraid you're going to have to keep watching to see if I manage to pull this off. But uh, I'm confident. Anyway, if you've made it this far through this Mammoth video, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions or you want to make any comments, please don't hesitate to do so. Stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>